I'm going to show you the library, yet another JavaScript library called eggplant.js, which I have made, which is a very small trying to build an implementation of React. As you can see, it has only support for use state, render, and create element. And again, it has obviously, it has a lot of limitations. And we have given how to you, how do you actually run this. So heading to the repository, we have uh, an example folder where there is an actual React app. You know, you, you see if you see. Uh, the React is actually imported through the window object, and that's why I'm not actually importing from the module, but directly from the window. And what you see over here is all JSX. And in the index.html, I am adding my scripts for React and React Tom. And uh, the ability to write JSX over here, it's because I've added the Babel script, which is doing that. So for now, I, I'll just comment out the library and use React to see the application. I've already started the app. Let's refresh a little bit. And, and now you can see this is a React app, which is running on React library. And then you have few states, like simple states and all that. And if you really want to see, you can actually do React. And this is this is React. This is the React library. Now um, we are going to replace the scripts uh, with our own library. So I'm going to comment this out. Add the script. Now. I'm going not going to change the app because we want this to be a uh, kind of clone of React. So it has to use the same APIs and same kind of architecture which React uses internally. And let's see how far we that goes with. Now I'll re reload the app. As you can see, no React script was downloaded. Uh, but this library, the library which we made, and app still works. Now let's take a quick look at how it is being done. If I go back to my uh, repository now, here is, uh, before even going ahead, uh, if you see, this is the JSX. The way this will be transpiled by Babel is if we just copy this and paste it to the Babel uh, online ripple. So you see it creates react.create element and you know it creates all that syntax. And if you see, so basically we need to override this create element, use state, and also the render which we are using. Now go back to that. It all starts with the first render. So first render. So we pass the React. Uh, we pass the React uh, component and we pass the the container. It starts painting the DOM. So the painting of DOM is done before even go if before it, it goes to paint. We saw the create element function, which is basically converting the elements, uh, actual DOM elements to a virtual DOM. So if you see, this is what we are doing. It has the type. The type is basically what you see here. It's P, right? Or whatever element tag is, and then props, whatever class name, or, or whatever he passes. And then children are the node children of the elements. And after that is being done, so we the component goes to render method, and as I've seen, as I've shown you, it after it's being converted to virtual DOM, we paint on the actual DOM, <coughs> and uh, this is how it's been done. We we recursively call each child, 
uh, and call paint on it and if, as you can see we are not painting at the one go but we are actually waiting for a browser if there is a time it's it's non blocking painting is what what I can say and and this is the first part the rendering part which is completed next comes the hooks part right we, we still want to have this hook functionality over there and you see, as you can see we are not only passing the the state variables inside our elements like this we are also passing the functions right this function is being passed to the buttons so the this being this is being done by adding event listeners over here if you see um, whatever event listeners are they on the elements we are adding those and the use state uh, again is an override so if it is a first render we are registering that hook and initializing initializing that initial with whatever initial state was being passed and we also send back the update function which the functions will call to update the state and it will be an array, uh, array return of a tuple basically with the value and also the update function it's very sim exactly how the app how react has and then we so whenever a function calls that particular update handler we have something called update state function which basically checks if there has been a new state for it to update so if it, there is no new state update it will not actually update our DOM so that is in, so we do that by actually storing the previous value of the hook so this is how we store the hooks um, we have all the hooks queued and all the hooks have uh, indices and each one of them has the previous value and the next value and the way we store it by is by doing by using Q data structure where we push out all the previous values and then add only the previous and the next value uh, with that being done it uh, it will tell us back if we should uh, if the app should be updated or not and then when uh, when we are good to update the app it takes the previous virtual norm and creates uh, with the new state which have which it has received it creates a new virtual norm now it will start the reconciliation between the pre uh, between the previous and the next and it will compare both the trees check where or which node needs to be updated and updates that particular node itself <coughs> so um, so yeah I mean that's basically how the library is so if you see I've tried to also link the URLs where this actual elements uh, functions sorry are implemented for example create app <coughs> create element you see they are it has exactly the same parameters as which we are using and this is the actual react source code uh, similarly similarly to render and use state which are all uh, we are exposing on the window object and we are also uh, exposing other things such as hooks so that you can always see what your hooks window dot react dev tools so you can see the hook value what exactly the hook value is I have written few tests uh, need for test is I mean obviously for the hackathon in we ha don't have to write the test but these tests were needed because there were a lot of moving parts and I had to make sure that I'm not when I'm writing something new I'm not breaking you know the previous implementation once that is done um, I'm using a package called Uglyfy to output the final bundle which is minified and compressed and so um, yeah I mean it's it's always good to see what how things work under the hood and uh, yeah, I think that's the demo. Thank you.